Hello everyone, hope you're having the most wonderful day today. Welcome to the Film Insight channel. For today's video, we're going to discuss some more of the worst restaurants featured on Kitchen Nightmares and reveal all they're doing now. So, sit back, relax, and without further ado, let's get right into the content guys. Manja Manja For a season 7 episode, Gordon Ramsay heads over to Manja Manja in Woodland Park, Colorado to rescue it from closure. Owned by Julie Watson, a former realtor, she jumped on the opportunity to buy the building of a fast food joint, hoping to fulfill her dream of owning a restaurant. She had quickly come to realize that she's terrible at running one and takes out her frustrations on the staff. This is especially true for her head chef, Trevor, who she likes to control. Unfortunately, Trevor is also a liability to the business since he throws fits, messes up orders on purpose despite his boss, and walks out mid-service. All things considered, Manja Manja was going to need professional help if it hoped to survive, so the owner reached out to Ramsey for some aid. Upon his eventual arrival, the famous chef is perplexed to see that the restaurant has a drive through despite having a fine dining theme. Heading in to sample the food, Ramsey orders the soup of the day, which not only takes long to get to his table, but is served in a styrofoam bowl without a spoon. Soon after his awful meal, the Kitchen Nightmares host meets with the owner and tells her that his soup was dreadful. Ramsey also points out that there's nothing Italian about a restaurant which is decorated with weird frilly curtains, fake flowers, and Christmas lights. Through some further discussion with Watson, Ramsey's revealed that the head chef has no formal training and has only kept his position due to how hard it is to find a replacement. Later on, Ramsey attempts to try more of the food to see if their chef is competent at anything, but is only met with meals that are either store-bought, poorly cooked, or uninspired. Meeting with the staff to get their feedback, they admit that they haven't been trained and expose the fact that all of their food is frozen. The owner goes into complete denial mode hearing this, expressing that her food is fresh and tasty. Yeah, right. Leaving and returning the following day for the dinner service, Ramsey scans the kitchen starting with the walk-in freezer and finds tons of containers filled with pasta. Additionally, he notices that they microwave meals several times with different ingredients, which results in terribly tough food. To make matters even worse, the cooks are careless about what they touch, holding raw chicken at one moment and vegetables at the next, which leads to cross-contamination. Embarrassed with the state of her restaurant, the owner rushes outside and has a mental breakdown, but Ramsey manages to calm her down. After the horrible service, Ramsey gathers the staff once again, hoping to get everyone on the same page before making any renovations. However, things only get worse when Watson reveals that Trevor often comes to work high, is violent, and scares away customers. Thankfully, the owner decides to finally sack this awful man, and Ramsey helps them find an interim chef called Don to fill the void. Spending longer than usual on the renovations, Ramsey and his team revamped the restaurant over the course of 24 hours. Revealing the changes to the staff, they're impressed with the bright and classy interior and think that the new food is exquisite compared to their old selection. Post Kitchen Nightmares, the restaurant receives mostly positive reviews on Yelp and TripAdvisor for the food and service. While they did keep most of Ramsey's changes, they ended up re-adding some old menu items to please their regulars. Don parted ways with the business soon after the Kitchen Nightmares host left, but it pushed Watson to hire a new chef. Ultimately though, the restaurant closed down in November of 2014. On the bright side, Trevor went to rehab and seemingly claimed his life back from addiction and we're really glad. Katialo in yet another Season 7 episode, Gordon Ramsay decides to visit Catialo in Queens, New York to bring it back on its feet. Purchased by Manny and Christina in 2000, Manny decided to buy it on a whim when it was up for sale without consulting with his wife first. To make the situation even worse, neither of them have any experience working in the industry, which is one of the many reasons why they aren't succeeding. Since both of them have their ideas as to how a restaurant should be run, the couple often argue and even do it in front of customers. Hoping to keep the business alive, the owners even brought in their children to help out, but nothing is really working, so they resort to asking Ramsey for some guidance. When he finally arrives, he meets with the owners and is shocked by the revelation that Manny impulsively bought the restaurant soon after getting a haircut next door and noticed that the building was for sale. His wife never wanted any part in this venture, but she was forcibly dragged into it and truly feels trapped. Predictably, the married couple's relationship deteriorated so much as a result that Christina wants to get a divorce. Sitting down, Ramsey attempts to order a gyro platter, lucanico, and a pasticcio, then scans the dining room as he waits. He notices that the decor is dull and that the colors are gloomy, then finally receives his food which is not only disgusting but very bland. Unhappy about the feedback, Manny gets into an argument with Christina which Ramsey can clearly hear from the dining room. Meeting with the staff later on, they tell the Kitchen Nightmares host that they switch from using fresh to frozen produce to save on money. Evelyn, their daughter who works there part time, admits that the biggest issue is her parents who just aren't cut out to run a restaurant. In the face of this admission, the couple just start blaming one another as usual and fail to own up to their mistakes. Later on, Ramsey attempts to observe the dinner service which was a disaster to say the very least. Aside from the customers hating the food and sending it back for being either dry or overcooked, the famous chef notices that they heat some of their meals in the microwave. 
Heading into the basement, Ramsey finds tons of raw meat stored next to the cooked meat, jars of food that are years old, and moldy produce. Showing the nasty walk into the owners as well as Evelyn, Manny simply shifts the blame on the staff, while Evelyn insists that it's his job to check it. The following day, Ramsey heads over to the owner's home, hoping to get them to realize that their lack of communication is their biggest downfall. Thanks to the heartfelt plea from Evelyn, the couple agreed to try to be on the same page for the sake of the restaurant and their family. After helping the owners refine their cooking skills and get them to work together, Ramsey was finally ready to move into the renovations. It's safe to say that the changes made were certainly well received since both owners seemed to be overwhelmed with happiness. Following the taping of this episode, the business's sales improved and the couple was finally working together. Not only did their relationship improve, but Evelyn felt comfortable enough to make the restaurant her full-time job since the atmosphere was much nicer. Even though the owners stuck pretty closely to the changes Ramsey made, the reviews on Yelp were very mixed. Some were in love with the new fresh food, while others wanted them to bring back the old menu, which we can't understand why. Temporarily closing down in April of 2014 due to the renovations, they were supposed to reopen but never did. Months later, a restaurant called Kalamaki in New York City opened up in its place, which has great reviews and is even frequented by some Kati Alo regulars. Zena Flaming Grill We're gonna end things off on a good note with a restaurant called Zena Flaming Grill that Ramsey tried to rescue in the seventh season. Owned by Faye and her niece Brenda, they decided to run the restaurant alongside some other family members, which wasn't exactly the best decision. They constantly get into arguments which pushes customers away, and the owners blame one another for everything, leaving the restaurant in complete chaos. Being hopelessly in debt and on the verge of losing their business as a whole, the owners called out to Ramsey for some help. Upon his eventual arrival, Ramsey meets with the owners separately in hopes of understanding the issues at hand. Faye expresses that she has to do everything, while Brenda says that she never gives her a chance to take control. Later on, he heads in to sample the food and is told by his server Amel that Faye is overbearing, short-tempered, and lazy. Not impressed with the food, Ramsey is further disappointed at the sight of the busing station that is only a few feet away and is filled with dirty dishes. The famous chef gives his feedback on his meals and expresses that the food was awful and clearly frozen despite being advertised as fresh. Holding a family meeting later on, Faye continues to claim that she does everything herself but Brenda reminds her that she isn't running the restaurant alone and should delegate the work. Observing the dinner service, Ramsey notices that the customers seem eager to try the food but are ultimately disappointed and many send it back. One of the patrons says that she doesn't like her chicken dish since it was dry and Faye immediately questions her and refuses to believe that there's a problem with it. Inspecting the kitchen to understand why the food was so bad, Ramsey finds months worth of prepared frozen food in the freezer, with some being so old that they were freezer burnt. Returning the next day, Ramsey proposes that they run the restaurant without Faye as an experiment so that she can feel more confident about letting them do things. Even though there were a few hiccups and arguments that broke out between Amel and Mark, Brenda managed to defuse the situation and took control of the staff. After some training, Ramsey and his team finally renovated the building and the staff seemed ecstatic with the changes made. Following the taping of this episode, Faye supposedly went back to doing the same thing, which resulted in two of the staff members who appeared in the episode deciding to leave. Thankfully, she decided to sell the business to another man named Ray Yunis, who turned the restaurant into a respectable place with good food. Well, that'll be all for today's video here on the channel. I do hope you enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to drop a massive like down below and comment your thoughts. Subscribe for more content like this, and turn on those sweet bell notifications for instant access to our content. Have a good one, guys.